Hi there, it's Sandy Allnock, and today I'm going to talk about how to draw a cute little push cart and customize it with whatever you think should be sold in a push cart. But we're going to focus on watermelons and art supplies because that's two things I love. Let's get started. This is a belated part two of my watermelon series of two videos. So you can look two videos back to find the first one, which was a doodled watermelon and a push cart, whatever you're going to put in it has a bunch of different components, cabinet wheels and umbrella. A cabinet can be a rectangle and it can have all kinds of segments off of it. You can have little pockets to tuck things into. It can be a rectangle that's smaller at the bottom, bigger at the top. So it's got a little more elegant shape. It can be a tall one and have little drawers sticking out of it. There's a ton of things you can do. You could even do a wagon style thing with just a platform with wheels on it and then put something else in it. For the wheels, you can either have two wheels and, you know, push it around that way. You can have one wheel and pull it with a bicycle. So if you have a bicycle you want to draw in front of it or stamp in front of it, go for it. You can have something that has one single wheel on it. I've seen those and I don't know how you make them not fall over. So I, I guess you'd have to either have kickstands or some sort of little thing under the wheel to hold it in place. Or you could have one wheel with either a kickstand or a little wheel on the other side. So you've got the cabinet, you've got the wheels and then the umbrella. The umbrella, you can design any way you want, anything, like just make a half circle with a line across it and make a very simple one. And you can make it a little thicker, you can make it a little thinner, you can give it a, a fluted edge, I guess a scalloped kind of edge to it. You can make one that's triangular, one that's triangular and has an edge hanging down from it, a flap. Tons of options for these. The one that I kind of like too is a straight one that has scallops on the bottom of it, stripes hanging down. Just think of all the fun things you could do with it. You could even, you know, make fringe that hangs down. I mean, lots of fun, lots of fun. I'm going to give you three quick ideas on how you can combine these components. And then we're going to do two of them and I'll do them in color for you. So first take the, the cabinet, add a big wheel and a little wheel to it. You can put your umbrella either over where the person stands or over where the things are, depending, depending on what you're selling in your cart. You can do a square cabinet with the, the wheel and the kickstand. Make sure you give them a handle so you can push them around from one place to another. And you can add, of course, a large or small umbrella. It can be whatever size you want. Just make sure you're making it so it doesn't tip over so that people don't get confused by it. And if you're doing that platform one, here's something that I was thinking for those who like to do art impressions, watercolor stamping, make a platform and fill it with all the pots. There's all kinds of pot stamps. So uh, pots as in pottery and fill in with flowers and then put an umbrella over that. And you can make a flower stand of your own just by using your stamps and then adding wheels and stuff to it, which we're going to talk about as we move through the rest of this video. So that's three quick ideas. Let's start on a watermelon cart. So watermelon is something I love. And last week I did a doodled watermelon, which was really fun. And here I've sketched out some of the parts and I used a ruler to try to get them straight, but I wouldn't really worry about being perfect because I am not gonna be perfect in this. It's gonna be very loose. But I started out with some straight lines to make the cabinet at the bottom, a single wheel, I drew a handle on it, and then the two kickstands. For the part at the top, that umbrella, I measured an equal distance, a half inch for each of my stripes so that I could make the scallops even. So that's one place where I measured, but in general, I don't tend to measure things like this because it's just a fun little thing that you can put in a sketchbook or do a little drawing make it tiny and use it on a card, whatever you'd like to do. And then I used water-based markers to put some color at the top and then just use water to bring that stripe down toward the bottom section. 
the cabinet, I wanted it to be pink since it's a watermelon cart. And I put the pink color at the bottom. I'm using Canson XL watercolor paper, which works really well with water-based markers. They don't tend to end up with hard edges. But you could also watercolor this. You don't have to use water-based markers. Or you could scribble onto a piece of plastic or something with the water-based marker and then use that as a palette to pull color from. But you'll get more color if you color directly on the paper. But it's a little tougher, as you'll see in the next one when I use fancier paper, because that tends to try to hold on to the lines. So when you have an end line in your marker line, you won't be able to blend it out. But on this paper, it's a cellulose paper, not a pulp paper. So it tends to soften out and water out nicely. So for the scalloped edge, I just threw a little green along the tips of each of the scallops and then put some green into the handle section and the kickstands so I could add water to them. I'm trying to add water to all of the sections that I'm using the marker for so that it feels like watercolor when it's all done. And don't worry, we're gonna be adding some pen and ink to this afterward. So if you have some areas when you're painting this that didn't quite come out right, just wait until you add the pen lines because that will clean up a lot of things. So I've got an, a lip on the top of my cabinet that'll be green and the pole I decided would be silver but I'm making silver by putting in less of the black so the water will carry that color down. Now for the wheel, this is something kind of cool. I drew two circles, an outer circle and an inner circle using a compass. And for the bottom half, I put my marker line at the bottom of the circle. And on the top half, it's the bottom half of the top half. See what I mean? <laughs> There's like a, a bottom half for the bottom half and a bottom half for the top half. And then when you add water to fill in the whole thing, all of the area where you have the pencil line around it, then it starts to look dimensional because you've got a shadow on the bottom of the top section and the bottom of the bottom section. And that water, as it goes around, will just blend everything so it starts feeling like a wheel that has dimension. For the ground, really simple. I just put a little bit of marker down along the horizon. And then I threw some water down on the paper and then touched, just barely touched the tip of the brush to the marker. And that gives it a nice soft edge as it blends down into the white of the paper. And then with a clean brush, just kind of lifted an edge if anything got funky. Now I can add a center. So I just added a blob of the marker and a blob of water into the middle of it because there was pink behind it. If you wanna have some highlights on it, you'll see me have some highlights in the next one. The center of the wheel needs to be below the cabinet. But since it's on top of the pink, I needed to fill it in entirely with the black. But I'm using just a damp brush to pull color for each one of the spokes. Instead of trying to draw them all, I'm letting them brush do the work. And they're going to be wonky, but that's part of the charm of it. It's just a, a fun illustration. It's not meant to be perfection and try to make everything exact. So next is to add whatever product you're gonna sell. And here I'm gonna be, of course, selling watermelon. So I drew some half circles for the bottom of the watermelon and some triangles for the top section. And I considered making all of it into like watermelon slices up there, but I thought I should probably put something else. So how about some watermelon beverages? So I thought that would be kind of fun. So I made some rectangle-ish watermelon glasses and then some a couple of fancy ones just so I'd have something different in there as well. Added a little bit of green on top. I'm not sure what you'd put for green foam on top of a watermelon drink, but there's a couple of limes on the fancy glasses and I'll add the details to those when I get to the pen and ink work. Once again, I don't want any of the marker areas that just have pen in them to sit by themselves. I want all of it to look watercolory, so I just use the brush to soften all that out. And then the pen work. And this is not a fancy pen. This is just a Technica pen. I'll put a link to it in the supplies down below. And I'm just outlining what's here. And for each one of these watermelon slices, I am drawing the triangle itself that I've done with the watercolor marker and then adding a triangle on one side. And that bottom curve is thicker on one end than it is on the other. And that makes them look like they're little wedges. Someone on Instagram asked me about that last week. 
So I thought I'd include that in this one as a little bonus tip on drawing watermelon. For the glasses, I literally just drew rectangles around them. Mine are skinnier at the bottom than they are at the top. Really easy to do. Threw a straw in there for each one so you'd realize that they're drinks. And then the fancy glasses needed a little bit of fancy drawing around the edges of them, but they look pretty tasty and I could use a drink myself. Finished the last of the outlining details using the skinny pen. And then I switched real quickly to a white pen so I could just mock up something, just a little scribble to make it look like there's something on the chalkboard sign. And then use the nib of the marker to make watermelon seeds on the cart itself. Trying to work some of those into the area behind the wheel so that there's parts of them showing so it looks like they're behind where the wheel is. So the second cart that I want to show you is the Art Venture cart. I'm going to speed this one up just a little bit faster. It's on Arches watercolor paper. It's a cold press paper and it's really hard to melt out the lines. You can't let them sit for very long if you're using any water-based marker on this paper. And it's, it's just one of those papers that hangs onto the edges. But for this one, I'm making sure that each section, I use the water right away on it. I'm not letting it sit for any length of time because I want to make sure it all gets very soft. It's going to be an art cart full of all kinds of goodies. I haven't drawn all the goodies into the containers because that seemed like more work to do that I could do with the marker when I get to that point. But I have made my umbrella with the same technique as I used before, using the darker color on the bottom and lighter on the top this time. And I'm using the same technique for the wheel. I did the, the marker part on the bottom section of both the top and the, the bottom half of the wheel. And I was able to do a little bit more fancy stuff inside the, the center of the wheel because there's no color behind it. The bar that goes behind the wheel, I made it a little bit lighter behind the wheel than it is on the cart itself. Just a little, little trick to help make it look like that wheel is going to be a little bit see-through. The marker set that I have that I was using, this is a set from Sketch Marker, they're aqua markers, didn't have a really good rainbow in it. So I made it just a smooshy rainbow with a bunch of colors in it, and I'll handle the rest of that when I get to doing the pen work at the end. But here I'm adding markers into containers, pencils into containers, brushes. Uh, there's some paint tubes here, which were kind of fun to do. Put little caps on blobs of color and they look like paint tubes, a few markers in another bin. And then on top of it, I can add the spokes of the wheel and then start working on the pen and ink work. Just outlining different areas, putting in details in sections that I had just left some room to work. And me and room to draw go together really well, you might notice. <laughs> I love to draw. And this month, all of the drawing and doodling classes on my website are on sale. So if you've ever wanted to take a doodling class, this would be a good time to do it. The doldrums of the end of summer would be a great time to pick up a pen or a pencil and do some drawing. So link to that category on the website will be in the doobly-doo down below along with the supplies that I used to make these two drawings. And I'm gonna link you up to Society6 because I think this art venture cart needs to be a print that we can hang on our walls in our studio. Because even if we don't have a cart that rumbles down the street with free art supplies, we can have a beautiful painting that does the same thing, right? We can wish, we can wish it into existence. So I would even take a watermelon cart rumbling down my street right now, that would be great. So that is it for me. Thank you for joining me for this video. Subscribe if you haven't yet. My apologies for being late with this video. We had a death in the family, along with a lot of work things that got in the way of getting this video out on time. But yeah, we're here now. So I hope you guys will try making your own cart. And I will see you again later on this week. Bye-bye.